Hey guys, it's Hibbley Talk with Shane Simmons coming back at you again with another episode. And yes, I sound a little congested and stuffy because I've been double teamed by my two little girls who both have given me something apparently. So <laughs> thanks, gals. Anyway, I'll try to plow through it. My voice a little bit shaky, but yeah, it's been worse. So let's get to it. Had a few people wanting some more updates on the Hurricane Helene situation, and I'll go back over that a little bit. And again, donations and everything you can do are so much appreciated because now you know just was it just a little bit over a couple weeks ago when that hit we were in 90 degree weather so we, we were dealing with heat all kinds of situations that come created by that now just a couple weeks later it fall is set in and it's getting extremely cold at night and it's been down the 30s in some places 40s and even some snow in some areas so you're talking about a big shift in what the folks are dealing with there so definitely need I saw people trying to get donations for jackets and coats and winter clothes, gloves, and hats, anything you can do to help knock off the evening chill for folks would be mo so much appreciated. And um, it's just a bad, bad, bad situation. Still a lot of people missing too. Every day I see, you know, posts floating through about somebody who hasn't been heard from since this happened. And I can't imagine the heartbreak and the fear and the, the lack of closure of not knowing what's going on because... You know, communications are still pretty rough in a lot of those places, but also, you know, after a certain amount of time, you got to think either they've been trapped and, or unfortunately, they may be they're deceased, and which is the absolute worst case scenario. But still, sending prayers up for those guys, and just kind of giving you, giving you an idea where the situation stands right now, and appreciate your prayers and donations and everything that you have done for this area. It is much appreciated, and people will keep asking me specifically who they should donate to if they are in the, inclined to do so. And my favorite charity by far is the Samaritan's Purse. Um, they have legit been out in the fields doing the work. You see them guys, and like I said, I've, I'm a good one to bash FEMA and all the government agencies, but I can tell you, I will brag on people doing good work. The National Guard's doing great, and Samaritan's Purse has been out there in, in the trenches making this world a better place. So if you're inclined to make a donation, you can find them online pretty easily, Samaritan's Purse. And they are amazing out here. And God bless those folks, every one of them, who are out here battling the weather and the, leaving their own families behind to try and help other people. It is so appreciated and speaks to the goodness of mankind and the goodness of God, as they are a religious affiliation. <laughs> but anyway, oh, man, what's going on? I tell you, there's, there's a lot going on in the world. Two of the craziest stories in this world has come on from Kentucky. In this, so what's, what's going on with you people, Kentucky? What's wrong with you? <laughs> The first one, who, which you're going to think this is going to be a hard story to top, but I can top it. The first one is about a judge getting shot in his chambers and murdered by the sheriff in Letcher County, Kentucky. This is a crazy, crazy, crazy story. And there's actually video of it, sadly. And I watched it, and I don't know why. I'm just that kind of guy, I guess. But um, So there's a judge, Kevin Mullins, and he was in his chambers doing his own business minding his own business when the sheriff comes in and just does point blank just opens fire on him and kills him right in his chambers and it's a bizarre story but then i know a few people in the area i've seen a lot of comments and even in the grand jury trial phase of this you're hearing a little bit of hints that part of this was because this judge judge mullins was apparently allegedly let me emphasize that word, allegedly having some inappropriate contact with Sheriff Stein's daughter, who was 17 years old and underage, obviously. So, yeah, that makes it a lot more understandable to me. Uh, it's so crazy. They had had lunch together as part of a large group earlier in the day, and then apparently something set them off because during that lunch period, they, uh, there was a little discussion between Mullins and Stein's that we need to discuss this in private. So I guess they set up this meeting. Steins doesn't like what he hears and just opens fire and cold blood guns him down. So, But again, allegedly, if <laughs> that's the reasoning, believe me, nobody understands more than I do because I've got two young daughters and if anybody even looked at them funny, you know, they'd be held to pay. So I am not going to judge anybody. I'll let the courts do that. So yeah, I, yeah, I hope... But there's the best ending possible for that one because I just can't, I can't fathom a reasoning for that happening other than 
what they described it as a crime of passion. So they're trying to get it knocked down to a manslaughter charge, which would sound reasonable to me, but hey, I'm not an attorney, so let's move right on. So here's another story that's even crazier. As crazier as that is, as crazy as that is, you're hearing a judge getting gunned down by his guy that used to be his bailiff. Um, a young lady, I don't know if lady is a good word for her, but named Torlina Fields. She's a 32-year-old woman who killed, murdered her mother, bad enough, terrible, then cooked some of her body parts, including her dismembered head, and put them in a pot and was cooking them up and kind of apparently charred them. So not only did she, she's apparently not a good cook either, so she burnt her mother's body up. And the guy that found the whole situation was a guy that was apparently doing some work for him on the side. And he said he'd been there the day before and the mother, whose name was Trudy Fields, they were a confrontation between her and her daughter. And apparently Torlina then cast spells on her and the gentleman there doing some work and then was being very confrontational. So apparently she's into witchcraft of some sorts. So of course he thinks that's crazy. He leaves and comes back the next day, can't find anyone. Then he sees some drag marks where a body has been dragged through the fields and he makes he follows that and makes the grisly discovery of the body of, well, part of the body of Trudy Fields. And then he finds the rest in the kitchen and yeah. Yeah, this is a horrible situation. It's like, what in the world would possess someone to take their own parents' life? That's the first question. The second was, how in the world do you go from mur murder to cooking them? I don't know if she's going to eat them or what. But apparently it was the arms, legs, and the head were removed from the rest of Trudy Fields' body. And they found multiple body parts and organs inside of a folded mattress next to the body. So... This is just grisly, ugh, disgusting. It says Trudy Fields' head, hands, feet, and forearms were in a pot in the kitchen stove. And it says they were put in the oven until they were charred. I don't know if she was trying to burn up the evidence or, or what, but man, or pulling some Jeffrey Dahmer situation, I don't know. But either way, it's disgusting, it's heinous, it's, it's unfathomable. And this whole world's going crazy, but Kentucky, you're the winner this week. Usually it's Florida or one of these other places, but what's going on with you guys? You need to get your act together here. Anyway, we appreciate you guys for checking us out and staying with us. And, and again, the Hurricane Helene, I hate to just make this the Hurricane Helene show, and we'll get off of that topic in the future, but I did want you to know the situation now and that the need is still there for sure. The folks are really, like I said, the cold weather's come along, and putting people in a bad spot so any assistance you can give financially or otherwise with your time and effort and energy would be greatly greatly appreciated i will tell you that so till next time this is shane simmons hopefully talk see ya